Hello. Um, today we're going to be starting a unit on uh, properties of exponents. It is chapter eight. Um, and one of the things that I like to do as a teacher is to explain why things are the way they are. So this might seem a little strange to you, but um, I'm going to be covering um, all of the properties of exponents from 8.1 all the way to 8.5. However, the homework for this lesson is only going to be 8.1 and 8.2, but the order in which the properties are listed is kind of backwards in the book. So um, I'm going to do them in the order that I feel is, is, uh, makes more sense. And so hopefully um, you'll get what I'm talking about as we continue. So um, properties of exponents. First of all, you should know that properties have two components, um, a base and an exponent. So I've given you some examples here of how that works. So for example, in this, this is a power. 3 squared is considered a power. 4x to the third power. 8 to the fifth is, is a power. These are all examples of powers. But each power has a base and an exponent. So in the first example, the base would be 3. In this example, the base would be 4x. And in this example, the base would be a. And in this last example, the base would be 1.3. Then we, have, um, then we have the exponents. Well, the exponent in this case is a 2. The exponent in this case is a 3. The exponent in this case is a 5. And the exponent in this case is m. All right? So just wanted to be clear on what powers are and what a base is and what an exponent is because the properties of exponents are going to use this kind of vocabulary and I want to make sure that you know what we're talking about. So we're going to begin here. Um, and what I'm going to do, uh, you'll see a pattern here as we continue the lesson today, is for each property, and I believe there are seven of them, for each property I'm going to go through an example using regular numbers that will hopefully help you understand why the property is the way that it is. And then I will tell you what the actual rule is for the future. So when you are multiplying powers, as you can see here, you have um, 3 squared and 3 fourths, and of course it says with the same base. Again, from before, the base is 3 for this power, and the base is 3 for this power. They have the same base. So as long as the bases are the same, when you multiply them, we're trying to figure out what is going to be the rule of thumb. So, we all know that 3 squared literally means 3 times 3. Then we have 3 to the fourth, which literally means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, when you put all that together, how many 3's do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we get 3 to the 6th power. Well, how does that 6 relate to the 2 and the 4? Well, if you add 2 and 4 together, you get 6. So really, this is just 3 to the 2 plus 4. In other words, for future reference, Get this screen out here. For future reference, when you have a power multiplied by a power and they have the same bases, then the answer will be the base a to the m plus n power. This is now your rule of thumb, and you should make a note of that one. And if you want um, a verbal description, when you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. Okay, you add the exponents. All right, so then we're going to go to the next example, and, or the next property, sorry, and this is dividing powers with the same base, and we're going to do much the same thing in this scenario as we did in the previous scenario, again, to try to figure out um, what the rule is going to be. So when you divide powers, again, you have a power and a power, they have the same base, base is 3. So we know that 3 to the fifth power is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 divided by 3 squared, which is 3 times 3. And as you know, you get a lot of canceling going on. 3 divided by 3 divided by 3. In the end, you only have 3 3's left, or 3 to the third power. So again, the question becomes, how does the 3, that's the answer, relate to the exponents from before? How are 5 and 2 related to give you a 3? And if you recall, the last one was addition, it would make sense that in this case, it's subtraction. 5 minus 2 happens to be 3. So um, the rule here then is that when you are dividing powers with the same base, then you subtract 
the exponents, the top minus the bottom in that direction. So you get that as your rule. And we can say here that in the case of division, you subtract exponents. All right. Now division, now you can probably understand why I wanted to do it in this particular order because division is actually um, how we can explain very quickly the zero as an exponent and also the negative exponents, which is 8.1, which you'll actually be doing in your homework today, is this uh, zero as an exponent. So you will notice that what I'm doing to explain this is I'm back to division, okay? So the question here is, how do you get a zero exponent? Well, the only way to get a zero exponent is to have the same exponent on the top and on the bottom. Based on our previous example, we know that this is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 divided by 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And all of these 3s are going to cancel. And whenever you cancel everything, that becomes 1, because 3 over 3 is 1, 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 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, okay? So our rule for this example is that anything to the 0 power is 1. There's our rule. When you have a 0 exponent, the answer will be 1. Um, so in this case, for 0, um, so we're going to put here any number, well, except for 0, any number to the 0 power is 1. Any number, any variable to the 0 power is going to be 1. And I hope that you see why. You can probably understand now why. Um, I wanted to do division first. Division is not actually in your textbook until 8.4, but it makes a lot of sense to do division first, and then we can understand why this zero works, because with division, we know that we're supposed to subtract uh, the exponents. So when I do this here, um, I'm going to get this is the same thing as 3 to the 4 minus 4 power. Right? So what I'm saying is, we know from this lesson that if I have division, I subtract the exponents. So in this case, if I use that property, I subtract the exponents, I'm going to get 3 to the 4 minus 4. And 3 to the 4 minus 4 is 3 to the 0 power. So 3 to the 0 power is equal to 1. And hence, that's why anything to the 0 power is 1. And there you go. Another uh, way that we can use division is for negative exponents. So we'll move on to uh, this example here, and we'll talk about negative exponents, again, using uh, division as our um, way of showing this. So 5 squared is 5 times 5, divided by 5 to the fifth power, which is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Um, again, you will see that you can cancel off um, the 5s there, and what's going to happen is you're going to get um, 1 on top, because everything canceled on top, but you still have three fives on the bottom, so you're going to get five cubed, one over five cubed, all right? Um, if you use the division property, which says to subtract, you're going to go five, and the top number goes first, subtract the bottom number, and in fact, you get five to the negative three. So you'll notice this is a negative three exponent, all right? And this is a positive three exponent, but it's on the bottom of the fraction, whereas this isn't a fraction at all. So from this, we understand that when you're doing negative exponents, so if you have a to the negative n to the negative power, then it becomes the reciprocal, and then you make the power positive. So negative exponent would be equivalent to the negative 3 here, but we know that when that happens, you actually put it on the bottom of the fraction as a positive um, exponent. All right, so this is your rule for negative exponents. And so for negative exponents, you reciprocate.
And if you're interested, um, you can actually use your calculator. And if you take 1 and divide it by 5 to the third power, you actually end up with 0 0.008. And if you still don't believe me, you can actually take 5 and raise it to the negative 3 power, and you get the same 0 0.008. So I hope that that clarifies why um, the negative exponent gets reciprocated. But if not, you need to just remember that these are the rules. These ones that I'm squaring off are the rules that you're going to be needing for the lesson. OK. And then we have uh, the next one is raising a power to a power. This is not the same thing as multiplying a power and a power, um, but it's raising a power to a power. So you already have 3 squared as a power, and now you have this raised to the third power. And that's what we're talking about here. What, what happens in that scenario? Well, we know that 3 squared cubed literally means 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared. It means 3 squared 3 times. So then 3 squared, furthermore, is 3 times 3, 3 times 3, and then 3 times 3. So at the end of the day, how many 3's do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 3 to the 6th power. And my question is, how is the 6 related to the 2 and the 3? You can't add 2 and 3 to get 6. You can't subtract 2 and 3 to get 6. But if you multiply 2 and 3, then you get 6. So this is 3 to the 2 times 3 power. And so the rule of thumb here is that when you raise a power to a power, you multiply exponents. Awesome. And so our rule would be a to the m, oops, didn't mean to do that. It would be a to the m times n power. Alrighty. Then we have raising a product to a power. So we're almost uh, done here. We only have one more after this. And again, this is a product, so basically what that's saying is that inside the parentheses, you have a product. It could be two numbers, it could be a letter and a number, but you have two of these. Uh, you have this two numbers inside, and they're being multiplied. So again, 2 times 3 to the third power, it literally means 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. In other words, 2 times 3, 3 times. 1, 2, 3. Okay, and because it doesn't matter which order we multiply in, that literally means 2 times 2 times 2, and 3 times 3 times 3, which is basically 2 to the third power times 3 to the third power. So what you can see there is that if you have a product, basically you need to distribute the cubic um, the exponent to both the 2 and the 3, as we've seen here in the end. So the rule here is going to be that if you have a product, you need to distribute a to the n times b to the n. All righty? So basically, distribute. And this is the same thing that happens in the situation where you have a quotient. So there we go. Raising a quotient to a power. Same idea. You have something inside the parentheses that's being divided. So you have to take 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths times 3 fourths. Five times. Well, we know that we can just multiply across. So we're going to get. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 over 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And basically, we get 3 to the fifth over 4 to the fifth. So in other words, again, we can see that we are um, distributing. We have 3 fourths inside the parentheses, and in the end, the 5 needs to be distributed to both the top and the bottom. So again, we're going to say distribute. And then over here, we're going to say that it's a to the n over b to the n. Now, if you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now, um, I want you to not feel too overwhelmed. It's very important that you um, write all these properties down. Uh, today, specifically, we're going to be focusing on zero and um, negative exponents. Um, and then as the week progresses next week, you will see the other ones come about in the lessons. And you can always go back and watch this video if you're not clear on how those properties work. 
But again, today we're going to be starting with 8.1, which and 8.2, which is zero and negative exponents. And so here I have some examples. Um, it's important to remember that the property for zero is that anything to the zero power is one, and that if you have a negative exponent, that you need to reciprocate it. So as an example here, I've got first example here says four to the negative three power. So according to my um, property, I need to rewrite that as one over four to the positive third power. So the negative exponent becomes a positive exponent after you remove it to the bottom. So that's literally um, most of what I have to do, but now it's important for me to know what is four to the third power. So I will take my calculator and do four to the third power is 64. So my final answer is one over 64. Okay, that's how I apply the uh, negative exponent property. In this case, because I have negative 1.2 to the zero power, it's really simple. The answer is one because anything to the zero power is one. Okay, so now we're gonna let you try this one here. Simplify each expression. You see some are negative exponents, some have uh, zero exponents, um, and so your job is going to be to simplify those. Um, and also be prepared to come to class and do one on the board because I might actually call you guys up to actually do a different one um, to make sure everyone got them right. So then my second example is to simplify the expression. So now we have variables in the mix and I want to start with A. First thing that you want to notice is that there are no parentheses here. So the negative three exponent is only affecting the X, not the four, not the Y. So in this case, we are not distributing. Okay, but we know that this is gonna be four times y, and then, like I did in the previous example, this uh, x to the negative three is going to be one over x to the positive three because it's a negative exponent, so I move it to the bottom to make it positive, um, and so there I go. Um, and now, I just wanna simplify my answer, and if there's no fraction on the four and the y, you can just put a one over it, and you can multiply across, so 4y times 1 is just 4y, divided by 1 times x cubed is just x cubed, and this would be my final answer. In the case of b, um, in this case, the w is a negative exponent, and it's already on the bottom, so I'm going to show you how this works. This is basically easier if you say 1 divided by w to the negative 4 power, which in turn means that it's one divided by, if I just take the w to the negative fourth power, it becomes one over w to the fourth power. Okay, but now it's funny because you have a fraction. You have one that's divided by one over w to the fourth. Okay, so that looks really ugly, but you might remember that it's easier in these scenarios to convert this division to multiplication of the reciprocal, okay? So dividing by one over w to the fourth is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, which is w to the fourth over one. When I do that, my final answer is w to the fourth. Now, this is a very complicated way of doing this problem. This is the answer. I want to encourage you uh, to um, consider the fact that when you reciprocate something, um, it always goes to the bottom. But if it's already on the bottom, when you reciprocate, it's just gonna go to the top. In other words, when you reciprocate two, the two is on top. So when you reciprocate it, the two goes to the bottom, one half. But if the two is already on the bottom and you reciprocate it, it just means that the two goes to the top. So my, the, my reason in telling you that is that if I'm looking at this and the negative four is at the bottom, and I know that I have to reciprocate it, it's just easier instead of doing all of that, to just go, oh, it's on the bottom, so if I reciprocate it, it's gonna go to the top. Done. All right, so again, you can do it this long way if you want, but in the future, if there's a negative exponent on the bottom, you should move it to the top. If the negative exponent is on the top, then you should move it to the bottom. So now I'm gonna let you try some examples here. Um, notice how here we have negatives on the top. You should move those to the bottom. We have negative exponents on the bottom, those should be moved to the top, and so on and so forth. So there's uh, examples for you to do, and hopefully um, it'll make sense. Okay, so here's our last example for um, 8.1, is evaluating. So they give me an expression, and they're asking me to evaluate, and they're telling me what the M and the T are. 
So what I would do, the first thing you want to do when you're evaluating is to make parentheses for all of the variables. Okay? So I know that I'm going to replace those variables with specific numbers depending on what they tell me. So because m is equals 2, I'm going to replace this m with a 2. And because t equals negative 3, I'm going to replace the t here with a negative 3. And then I'm going to carry on. Um, PEMDOS tells us to do exponents first. So a lot of you might be tempted to um, multiply 3 times 2 and get 6, and then square it and get 36. And that is not how you do it. Um, because multiplication, which is 3 times 2, multiply, multiply comes after e. e is exponent. So you want to the exponents first. So I'm going to go 3 times 2 squared is 4. Okay? And then here I'm going to take negative 3 to the negative 2 power. Now be very careful that these two negatives do not mean multiply negative 3 times negative 2. Okay? It just means that this negative 3 should go to the bottom because it has a negative 2 exponent. So I'm going to actually put the negative 3 on the bottom with a positive 2 as the exponent instead. And so again, PEMDAS tells me to do the exponent first. So negative 3 squared means negative 3 times negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9 on the bottom. And 3 times 4 on top is 12. And then you can reduce the, the, um, the fraction because I'm pretty sure that uh, 3 goes into 12 four times, and three goes into nine three times, so our final answer is four thirds. Awesome. So now, you are going to try this example. Again, we know that n equals negative two, w equals five, so for each um, example, you want to um, plug in those um, numbers for those variables. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, like I said, this is a two-part uh, section. We're doing 8.1 and 8.2. Um, in class tomorrow. So, um, the second item is scientific notation, which is actually pretty simple, um, but some of you mentioned to me that you weren't totally clear on scientific notation. So here it is. Scientific notation is when you see numbers, and you've probably seen them in your science classes, that look like this. There's like a number, we'll call it A, times 10 to some exponent. So because of this exponent situation, that's probably why, there, why this lesson is in this chapter, in this section. Okay, so some things about, about scientific notation that you should know. The value of this number, this, this a in front of the times 10. Um, by the way, this is not a variable x, this is just times 10. So this a has to be between 1 and 10. So basically what that means, you'll see there's an equal to here, and there's not an equal to there. So a has to be greater than or equal to 1, so it can't be 0. And it has to be less than 10, so it can't be 10. It has, the highest it could be is 9. It can't actually be 10. All right? So, um, so here's an example. The easiest way to do this is to just kind of show you some examples here, and hopefully they'll make sense. Okay? So here we go. This question says, is each number, this is example 4, is each number written in scientific notation? If not, explain. So I'm looking at A, and it says 56.29. The number in front of the times 10 has to be between 1 and 10. And 56 is so not between 1 and 10. So what we're going to say here is that the answer is no. And when it says to explain, we're going to explain that 56 is larger than 10 and therefore doesn't qualify. OK? So we're going to put here no, 56.29 is bigger than 10. And it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be less than 10. Okay, what about part B? Part B says 0 0.84 times 10 to the negative 3. Well, this number in front of the times 10 is supposed to be greater than or equal to 1. Greater than 1. Is 0.84 greater than 1? No. So the answer here again is no, because this time 0 0.84 is less than 1. And it's supposed to be greater than or equal to 1. All right? So my next question is for number C. Is that in scientific notation? And the answer here is yes, because the number 6.11 is in fact smaller than 10, but bigger than or equal to 1. So this one's yes. And you only have to explain if it's a no. OK? So now we're going to have you determine whether or not these numbers are in scientific notation in much the same way. 
okay? So in example five, another thing that you have to be able to do with scientific notation is you need to be able to write the number in scientific notation. This is actually currently in standard notation. It's just how you standard, like how you normally see numbers. Um, but there's no times 10. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're going to have a times 10 for sure in each problem. There's going to be a times 10. And there's going to be an exponent, OK? But the number that is going to be in front of the times 10 has to be less than 10. So I basically have a decimal that's back here. If there's no decimal in the number, then you assume it's at the end. So here's my decimal. And I need to move my decimal until the number is going to be smaller than 10. So in other words, if I move the decimal three times, for example, now I have 56,900. Is that number less than 10? No. So then if I move it three more times, now the number in front of the decimal is 56. Is 56 less than 10? No. So if I move it one more time, now I'm going to get 5.69. I don't write all those zeros. It's just 5.69. Is 5.69 smaller than 10? Yes. Is 5.69 larger than or equal to 1? Yes. So this number is going to be um, the part, the A. Now what I need to figure out is what is my exponent going to be? And that's what I've written over here. When you have a positive exponent, it means you're moving it to the left. So that's what we did. We started off here, and we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. We moved it to the left. So my exponent is going to be 7. It's a positive 7 because I moved it to the left. OK? So now for this example, my decimal is here. OK? This number, 0 0.00985, is smaller than 10 but it's not bigger than one. And remember, it needs to be bigger than or equal to one. So I moved my decimal two times, and now the number is 0.985. But still, 0.985 is not greater than um, or equal to one. So I have to move it one more time, and now the number is 9.85. 9.85 is smaller than 10, and it's larger than or equal to one. So that's how I know that it's 9.85. And then I look at how many times that I move the decimal. One, two, three times. But because I moved it to the right, it will be negative. So a negative exponent indicates that I moved my decimal to the right. Um, I hope that that makes sense to you, because now you are going to be asked to write these numbers in scientific notation. All right. Now we're going to go backwards, OK? Um, I do want to point out here that um, when you have a positive exponent, it basically means that the number is very, very large. As you can see, this is a very large number. When you have a negative exponent, the number is very, very small. 0 0.00985, that's very small. So just wanted to make that, that a distinction there. Um, so back over here, we're going to see that I have a positive exponent, so I should expect this number to be very large. And this has a negative 11, so I should expect this to be very, very, very small, smaller than the previous example. Okay, but again, I have here that a positive exponent means it's going to be greater than 10. The number should be greater than 10, not less than 10. A negative exponent, the number should be between 0 and 1. Okay, so to do that, we are basically going to move, we're going to go backwards. Okay, so we have 1.55, and because that's a 6, we're going to now take, you know, earlier we moved the decimal to the left, but now we're trying to go backwards, so we're going to move to the right, and we're going to move it six times. So here it is, one, two, three, four, five, six. And for all of these extra spaces, we're going to put zeros in them. So now I have a number that appears to be 15,500,000. Oh, not 500. Did I do that right? Three, up, oh, I lied. Let's get my eraser. It's not 15 million, it's 1 million. Counted too many zeros there. Okay? So you can see that three is thousands, um, this is millions. So we're like 1,550,000. That's a very large number. So 1.55 is a small number. This 1,550,000, large number. So a positive exponent means it's going to be a large number. Okay, in this case we have two. 
And now there is no decimal, but remember what I said earlier, if there is no decimal, you assume at the back, okay, at the end of the number. So 